Hi, this video discusses the fundamental principles of how um, an ECU works. So this is a Mark 1 MX5 ECU that I've got here. And it is a couple of sensors that plug into the wiring loom and are read by the module. And a few other bits to help demonstrate my explanation. So what happens when a driver sits in their car, turns on their ignition, immediately the module gets powered up. Now, if, um, if the programmer has flashed the ECU, uh, and when, when we say flash, it's kind of a, a nod to the fact that all the instructions that the programmer gives the controller are stored on flash. So I've got here a flash drive. Now, inside the module itself, there is um, flash memory, which is non-volatile. So that basically means anything that's written to it will remain on it even after it's powered down. So with that in mind, we've got flash. We've also got volatile memory, which um, you know in your in your modern computer you might say I've got um, five gig of memory. Um, now a controller like this would have far less, but it still has memory that's volatile, which means it's used for calculations at runtime. Um, but it, once the module is switched off, anything that's stored in memory is just lost. So those are the key differences. Um, so we've got sensor here, we've got um, a thermistor that can measure coolant temperature. Now that is measured as a raw voltage, so um, that's, that's not particularly useful uh, because that's an analog signal and, and as you know computers work in the, in the digital world. So on board you've got analog to digital converters. Now your classic commoner gardener voltmeter is essentially an analog to digital converter. So you might be able to measure a voltage and you'll be able to read that voltage on a digital display. So we've got lots of these things, very miniature, inside here and they're doing a very important job. They're taking analog signals and turning them into meaningful digital signals, which get stored to memory while the controller is running. So, when the controller gets switched on, it will read all its sensors and it will write their values to memory. And because this is an embedded system, they actually get written to the same memory address each time. Um, so yeah, lambda sensor, that's measuring exhaust oxygen content. Um, that might go here, we might have engine speed measured on, on the flywheel and that might get stored in this memory memory address 018 uh, in this instance. So um, when the ignition is clicked further on into the run what's happening is the starter motor starts to motor the engine and that starts the cranking and that ultimately starts the process of running the engine. Um, inside the ECU it will be constantly monitoring everything, all of its sensors, and when it sees that the engine speed is now cranking round, it gets itself ready to um, to start the engine idling. So um, inside the flash memory, it will be running a set of instructions that say, is the engine turning? And if it's not, it will just go back to the start and it'll say, is the engine turning? And eventually, when you do start to crank, um, that threshold will get exceeded, so we might have a threshold of say 150 RPM. Now when that threshold is exceeded, the controller which is running its set of instructions will jump to a new set of instructions that will say I'm now in a kind of run up condition where I'm running up to idle. Um, and in that condition it will have to start doing two key jobs in order to get the engine going. Now they are number one, injecting fuel, and number two, lighting a spark plug. Um, so the amount of fuel it, that's required is stored in a lookup table during the calibration phase of the engine development. And that's stored in flash as, as well as the spark, um, the crank angle for the spark. So y you need to know when to light the spark plug and how much fuel to put in, and those are both stored in flash as calibrations. Um, so you can imagine we're cranking, we're cranking, the engine speed is rising, it gets to a threshold, 
we start injecting the correct quantity of fuel and that's done by um, opening the fuel injector for a precise amount of time, a pulse width and that pulse width um, coupled with the rail pressure at the time uh, gives you an exact quantity of fuel delivery um, and then at the precise uh, moment we need to light the spark plug and if we get those two things correct the engine will start to run and it will idle and that's essentially what the job of, of this controller is now in 1993 in Europe um, the Euro 1 emission standard was introduced and basically what that meant is all the automotive manufacturers um, employed catalyt catalytic converters uh, coupled with an electronic control unit to precisely um, monitor the, the air fuel ratio um, because that's key to make the catalyst work and in, you know with those two tools combined they were able to meet the sort of um, much tighter emission standards that they hadn't previously had to meet um, the key items being CO, NOx and hydrocarbons which were the three legislated gases I believe. Um, so uh, now we, we see these all the time, um, and you know, you've, the, the way the way the lambda sensor works is um, it's measuring oxygen content. Now this this one here is actually called a HEGO, or no, it's not even a HEGO. HEGO would be heated exhaust gas oxygen. This one's not heated. Um, it's just heated by the exhaust stream. So it's just essentially an ego sensor. Um, and it basically, when there is very little oxygen in the exhaust, it reports a, a, a voltage of about one volt. And when the oxygen content um, increases or the mixture goes lean, this will drop to zero volts. And what the controller is trying to do is what, what we call closed loop lambda control. So it's constantly monitoring this value and if it stays high, it will start to lean the mixture out or reduce the fuel until eventually the sensor will report lean and will go low and then the controller will then start introducing more fuel and you end up with a cycling of rich lean, rich lean and that ensures that the catalyst is able to operate at its most effective um, operating regime and really you can't do that with a carburetor you can do that quite easily with a um, with a few sensors and a, a control strategy. Um, so hopefully you've understood the, the basics of how an ECU might work and also the reasons why they were first introduced back in 93 on, on a kind of grand scale.